everyone, we're moving on to question two. Just a reminder to start your questions on new pages, but let's just jump in. Okay, so it says, given the quadratic sequence, now I've written the general form of a quadratic sequence. This is not something that I can explain to you. This is what you have to know, right? Quadratic, the word quadratic means that the general form has an x squared in it. Okay, then um, what they've given us the first few terms of the sequence. Let's just jump in and do the first question. So, question two, 2.1.1. It says, write down the values of the next two terms. So, let's just write down the terms that we have. So, three, two, one. Oh, nice. Sounds nice. Two, six, one. Two, three, four. Okay. So let's look at the difference. Now, you might be saying, oh, Marks, how do I know how to do the difference? When we do quadratic sequences, it always has a constant second difference. So you must always work out the first difference and then the second difference there afterwards. So the difference here, you always say the latter term minus the previous term. So that would be negative 31, negative 29, negative 27. Okay, so that minus that actually gives me 2. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to perpetuate this forward, right, to get our next steps. So we have to say the T5 is going to equal 2, 3, 4 minus 25, okay, which equals uh, 209, okay, T6 is going to be 209 minus 23, okay which then gives us 186. Do you see that? Okay. So that is how we do that. And you see here, our constant, we have a constant second difference, which is a characteristic of this type of sequence. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So the next question says, determine the general term of the sequence in the form of a quadratic, okay? I said that this is what we anticipate as the form of a quadratic, so we're just gonna solve for it. Okay, so let's just write this out. Okay, so what this means is the value of t, okay, the value of tn at n, right? So n can be any term. So over here, this is t equaling 1, t equaling 2, I mean, sorry, n equaling 1, n equaling 2, n equaling 3, n equaling 4, right? This n indicates the place of the term in the sequence. Okay, so we know that T1 is going to equal A plus B plus C, right? Because it's just one. T2 is 4A plus 2B plus C. All I'm doing is I'm subbing in this value to wherever N is over there. Okay. Oh, it's not two. Sorry, I'm lying up in here. Okay, so I basically wrote out the first three terms. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we know that our first difference is going to equal T2 minus T1, okay? Which is what we did over here. We said T2 minus T1 equals 31, okay? So, we know our first difference, well, negative 31, okay? So, we know that T2 equals 4A plus 2B plus C. Then we're going to minus A minus B minus C, Okay? So, then these Cs cancel, and this gives us 3A plus B. So, we know our first difference, right, equals 3A plus B, okay? And we know in this instance, our first difference equals negative 31. Okay, we see that over there. Negative 31, first difference. Okay, so we have one equation. Then we know that our second difference, okay, is going to equal, right, the difference between these two, okay? So what we need to do is we actually need to do, we need to do the first difference, but this time we're going to say T3 minus T2, okay, to find out what equals negative 29, okay? So ne here we're going to have 9A plus 3B plus C minus 4A minus 2B minus C, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we're just going to simplify. Remember, we always have to simplify when it comes to this type of question. So we're going to have 5a plus 3b plus c minus 4a minus 2b 
plus b. Just check my math there. That's correct. Okay. So now, if we want to get the second difference, we're going to say the difference between t3 and t2, right, minus the difference between t2 and t1, which is what we've calculated up here. So it's 5a plus b minus 3a minus b, which equals 2a. So we know that 2 equals 2a. So now we can then solve for a. So what we're trying to do here, right, just to remind us what we're doing, we're trying to find a, b, and c, okay? We're trying to find a, b, and c, okay? So I don't generally like wasting paper, but I do want you to see my working out, right? So we're trying to find a, b, and c. We've just found out that 2 equals 2a. So if 2 equals 2a, then a equals 1, right? a equals 1. So now we've got what a equals. That's fine. Okay. But now we know that negative 31 equals 3a plus b, right? That's what we found out over here, right? When we first solved this, right? Negative 31 equals 3a plus b. Excellent. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just sub in our value of a. So it's actually just going to be 3 times 1 plus b, so then b equals 34. Okay, now we've got done a and b. All we have to do is find c. Now the easiest way to find c is to plug it into one of these equations that we had already put together. I'm just going to plug it into this one because it's the easiest one. Okay, so we know that t1 equals, so we say t1 equals a plus b plus c. T1, the first term in the, in the sequence, is 321. Okay, so 321 is going to be 1 minus 34 plus C. Okay, so C is going to be a big number. Okay, so now we're going to say C equals 321 plus 1 minus 34. Is that right? Oh, I did it the wrong way. Sorry. It's going to be minus 1 plus 34, okay? It's going to be 3, 5, 4. So our term that they've asked us, Tn, would be n squared minus 34n plus 354, okay? So that would be our answer. Now, you could be saying, Marks, that's like a real long way of getting the answer. But what I did is I didn't assume that you knew that these were the equations that we use. When we did this in class, or when I did it in class when I was at school, you generally said second difference, right, equals 2a. First difference equals 3a plus b. And first term equals a plus b plus c. Okay, and you would just learn this, right? And then you could just apply that very quickly. But I actually just showed you how to derive it from first principles, right? Because it's important to understand what these things mean. I hate that we use things and we don't understand what they mean. It's important to understand what we're doing. Okay, so that is that question. Let's now move on to the next question. Okay, 2.1.3. Remember to always leave spaces in between your questions just so that it's easy to mark. So it says, which terms of the sequence will have a value of 74? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation that we just calculated and we're going to make it equal 74 because it's saying the term equals 74, right? And we want to solve for n in this instance. So, right, I'm always going to, you always want to try to get zero on that side so that we can factorize, right? Because... That is always helpful for us. So 354 minus 74, I think it's 280. Okay, cool. Plus 280. So now we have to factorize. Now you could be saying, your marks, I cannot factorize that, that number. It's too big. Remember, you can always use the quadratic, quadratic formula if you want. Okay. But this one's actually not too difficult. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, remember, we're factorizing. This is generally how we go about it. Right. We are going to say, what are the factors of 280 that can help me get to negative 34? I'm going to use negative 14 and negative 20. 
right? Because if I those if I subtract both of those, then I'm gonna get that. Or not subtract them, I I I add them together technically because negative 20, negative 14 gives me negative 34. Then negative 20 times negative 14 is gonna give me positive 20 uh, two, 20. Why am I saying 28? Two, 280. Sure, that was a difficult one for me there, hey? So n minus 20 equals zero. So then n can equal 20. Or n equals, or n minus 14 equals zero. Okay? So then n can equal 14. So it can be n equals 20 or n equals 14. And that's why they said, yeah, which terms of the sequence, right? Because they obviously were sneaky, sneaky, and they knew that there was more than one term. And... We know that at n equals 20 and n equals 14, they both equal 74. Now, you might be thinking, how can that be? Like, we just showed that, like, it's decreasing over time. But, guys, importantly, don't forget your knowledge of functions. Look at this graph. It is a parabola, isn't it? Right? And we know parabolas, especially in this case, this is a positive parabola. Right? It's got a turning point, doesn't it? So, at each point along... Right? It's going to be repeated at some point, isn't it? Right? It's a parabola. So it makes sense that it would occur twice because it is a parabola. So don't get freaked out by that stuff. And don't forget about your functions knowledge just because you're doing a sequences and series question. Okay? Math is not this big compartmentalized thing. It's rather a way of solving a problem. So don't just forget about that. Okay? So that's that question. And let's now jump into... 2.1.4, which is the last question for this video. So it says, which term in the sequence, right? Which term in the sequence has the least value? Now you're going to be saying, okay, but what does that mean? But I have just given you a clue. We showed that it's a positive parabola. The least is going to be the turning point, isn't it? Right? So there is two ways of finding the turning point, right? You can either get the derivative, right? So you can say, um, f dashed of n equals zero. So remember that f little dash means derivative. So the derivative of this here is going to be 2n minus 34 is going to equal zero. So then n equals 17. We would expect that, right? And you might be like, oh, yeah, Moggy, whatever. But we would expect that because we see that n equals 20 and n equals 14, right? They both equal 74. So we know that the turning point kind of has to be right, in the middle of those two, kind of between those two, in order to get that property that I spoke of, okay, so that's one way of getting it, if you were like, okay, whatever, like I don't really get the derivative thing, show me another way, this is what you could do, okay, you could say, and remember, this is an important thing, and this is something that we learn, right, we can say that the x value of the turning point, right, which in this case would be our n, right, because n is our variable that we're working with, is negative b over 2a. If you're wanting to know how that's proved, right, I'll tell you how it's proved. I'm not going to show it for you now because it's quite a long proof, but it is basically where you complete the square of a equation like this, right, basically your standard, your standard form parabola. Right, go complete the square, and you'll see that you will get a turning point, right, of this. Remember, when you complete the square, it actually helps you get the coordinates of a turning point. So you can use this. You'll have to learn this. I don't think it is given to you, so you'll have to learn this if you want to use this way. But it's easy enough to do. Negative b is going to be negative of oh, negative 34. 2a is 1. Ah, again, gives us 17. Do you see that? Okay. So it's two different ways of doing it, um, of getting the answer. I would personally do it this way because I prefer the derivative. It makes sense to me. It's saying, you know, the, the gradient at the turning point equals zero, right? Which we know the, the gradient at a turning point always equals zero, okay? Because it's where, it's where um, your, your, if you draw a tangent, it would be a straight line, right? So a turning point is always going to equal zero, okay? But... If you, if you are not happy with that, right, and you're not comfortable with that, then do this way, but just remember that you have to learn this, okay? So that is that for this video. Um, we are going to move on to 2.2.